good soldiers follow orders. Welcome Star Wars fans, episode 3 of The Bad Batch just dropped and it's titled The Replacements. So let's go through and break it down. The episode begins with the Havoc Marauder flying through hyperspace and we can see electrical currents sparking along the underside. Inside the ship, Omega and the Gronk droid are relaxing in the cargo hold. I think it's awesome that the fan favorite Gronk is back and it seems to be the droid companion for the Bad Batch. We see them eating Clone Army standard issue rations, just like what Waxer gave Nuna in the Clone Wars Innocence of Ryloth episode. Echo mentions that their engagement with the Regs left the Havoc Marauder damaged and systems are failing throughout the ship. And Echoes takes a jab at Tech, saying that they could be done if someone wasn't so distracted. And then Tech replies that he's working on a scanner for the inhibitor chips. Suddenly the Havoc Marauder is pulled out of hyperspace by a failing capacitor. And a capacitor is basically a battery for the Star Wars universe. And I love the consistency of how it looks when a ship's getting pulled out of hyperspace, where it looks just like the Venator getting dropped from hyperspace from Clone Wars Season 7. After they crash land, Wrecker mentions that they miss Crosshair, when Omega mistakes his weapon cache for the part they need. And later in the episode, Hunter mentions that he's disappointed that they left a man behind. So this could be an indication of what the main motive will be for the Bad Batch this season, to get Crosshair back and disable his chip. Now back at Camino, we find out that Crosshair's designation code is CT9904 and that they are the first batch of enhanced clones. Also it appears that in order to have a clone's obedience levels at max, Crosshair has to continually go through the procedure we saw in episode 1. Now lurking from the shadows, we get our first introduction of Admiral Rampart, and Tarkin confirms that he's been in charge of the chain code implementation. And I love how we get to see how the Imperial higher ups are lobbying for projects in order to move up in the ranks of the Empire. Now Rampart calls Tarkin, Governor Tarkin showing that Tarkin is moving up the corporate ladder. Now a governor in the Empire is a high-ranking official in charge of a planet that is deemed high risk for rebellion or has rebelled before, such as Lothal and Rubbles, whose governor was Ryder Azadi, prior to Governor Price. But in case of Tarkin, it appears that governor is applying to region governor, and this is an indication by the badges on his uniform, which would make him a moth. Now Tarkin was in charge of the Outer Rim region, which consisted of locations such as Lothal system, which Rubble centralized around, and the Mon Cal system. And during the subjugation of the Mon Cal system, Tarkin would make Admiral Akbar his personal servant, which in turn is where Admiral Akbar would learn his strategies from. Now Tarkin and Rampart discuss Project War Mantle, which was first mentioned by Jin Erso while looking for the Death Star plans on Scarif. The project itself, we discover, is to increase the size of the New Order. The Empire planned to fill out the ranks of a burgeoning Imperial army with enlisted elite troops under a clone commander. These troops would later pass on the foundation and expectations of future enlisted troops, and Crosshair is promoted to commander to lead these troops. Now back with the Bad Batch, we see Tech and Echo rocking oxygen masks, similar to what we see Han, Leia, and Chewie wear inside the space slug. While inside the Bad Batch's ship, Wrecker is having a splitting headache and mentions that he must have hit his head during the crash, which was the cause of Tup's chip malfunctioning. Tech mentions that the ship is being systematically destroyed by the Ordo Moon Dragon, and Hunter and Omega go on a father-daughter hunt. Back on Kamino, we get introduced to the enlisted troopers, and we see that the Empire is creating troop loyalty by paying, feeding, and providing a living for these troops. And these soldiers mentioned that the Republic couldn't guarantee these, showing the disgust in the former government. Now behind the glass, Lama Su interjects that conscripted troops will never be as effective as clone troops, because the clone troops have been taught to fight since their creation. Rampart remarks that skills can be taught, but troops will be more loyal to the Empire if they sign on free will. Now as a test, Tarkin sends a new elite squad to Onderon to finish eliminating Saw Gerrera's insurgents. And on the troop transport shuttle, the enlisted troops question why Crosshair is in charge, showing the divide between clones and non-clones. Now back in the jungle, Saw Gerrera's forces seem to be loading up a modified Imperial patrol transport, which we first saw in Rubbles. Crosshair's team then corrals Saw Gerrera's insurgents, and we see one using a BTX-42 flamethrower. Shortly after, Crosshair drops a great one-liner after executing a prisoner, I don't know, but I wouldn't tell you if I did. I believe you. Now the enlisted soldiers question Crosshair's motives, and Crosshair's rebuttal is that they put him in charge because he does what needs to be done. Also with the subtitles, we see the squad designation is ES for Elite Squad. After Crosshair makes his motivational speech to the enlisted troops, he then disintegrates the soldier, which then provides his team all the motivation they need to execute the prisoners. Now during this time, Hunter got knocked out by the beast, so Omega stalks the beast alone and comes face to face with it once finding the missing part. She then realizes that the beast just wants the power from the flashlight and escapes. Now back at Kamino, the elite squad returns, and Tarkin acknowledges their effectiveness and states that the clone trooper program will stay. 
shortly after the Kaminoan scheme on how to keep their clones from going obsolete, and states that the genetic material of Jango Fett is degrading. This is when they proclaim that they need to move to the next phase of the clone trooper program, which in turn will yield a superior clone that the Empire will be interested in. Now the target for the genetic material will be the Bad Batch, and it is mentioned that the Bad Batch will not return willingly. Lama Su mentions that they will need a direct source, and that these clones are Kaminoan property, and they only just need one clone. Now the lead squad bunks in Clone Force 99 former quarters, which might be a nod to the squad becoming Task Force 99, which was the elite group of stormtroopers. And the episode wraps up with Omega getting her own room on the ship. Now what I think will happen going forward, it appears that Tech Scanner will also be able to deactivate the clone troopers inhibitor chip. This will be how they get Crosshair back and additionally other clones, and it seems like this is leading up to the clone rebellion. Also we may see Wrecker going ballistic in the next episode and him being the first test subject for Tech Scanner. Now in regards to the Kamino and Phase 2 clone troopers, they mentioned that they just need one of the modified clones, which makes it seem like that the Bad Batch is not made from the Django Fed template, which in turn would explain why they all look different. And this episode kind of makes the beginning of the Purge Trooper program seem more realistic, and that the Bad Batch is the template for these troopers, which would also explain why their armors are both similar color schemes, and it wouldn't surprise me if Hunter is captured and used for the main genetic pool. Now if you like this breakdown, make sure you check out some of my other videos and other breakdown. And also make sure you like this video and please subscribe to my channel, you can always change your mind later. May the force be with you.